Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we are going to be spreading some fake news for you here. Um, but we're going to be nice enough to tell you up front we're out to, that we're it's out, all bullshit. We're out to piss off Trump. That's what it is, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. No. Um, we are going to be telling the true story about fake news. That's what we're going to be doing. Hashtag fake news, fake news. Fake, fake news. True fake news? True fake news. There you go. Yeah. So anyway, uh, before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking Rebel Faction. By, this is the greatest name for a brewing company ever. This is the I Unlawful Assembly Brewing Company in Plano, Texas. Yes. And what was the ABV on this? 400. <laughs> it's 400. It was definitely 400, Mike. Sorry. Yes, 7? No, it's 400, remember? <laughs> so anyway. Um, this is a farmhouse ale, by the way. Um, yes. Or that's what they're calling it anyway. You have to be careful when you open the can, because it's actually got four times as much alcohol as we'll <laughs> open. <laughs> God it damn it, John. with alcohol as soon as you... But it is, it, it's a wonder we can breathe in this it, room, in order, really. In order to get 400%, you actually get a beer, and then they give you three more of just rubbing grain alcohol uh, <laughs> that, you, that you mix together with it. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. All right. I already hate their cans. Or Sunday morning. One of the two. Did you spill? Twice now. I just spilled two. Okay, see? It doesn't okay. pour well. Um, John's going, I don't have a problem. <laughs> Great head, nice smooth flow. We're yeah. not talking about last say, night, John. I have no idea how many times I've heard that in my life. <laughs> Great head, nice flow, you know, whatever. Yeah. All right. So Good rhythm. <laughs> does pressure. The, does the beard have good rhythm? <laughs> so fake news, guys. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting show, isn't Fake it? news. So anyway, uh, I kind of brought this show up and, uh, you know, kind of the inspiration of, around it was... We are seeing this advent and, and this rise of what's being called post-truth movement. Um, but most people kind of know it by the hashtag that, that's gotten behind it, which is fake news. Yeah. Uh, the president quotes it. Uh, um, the president's press secretary quotes it. And uh, a lot of the people on the, can we say alt-right? Can, is that a fair term? Yeah, I think so. Are, think are, so. are using uh, this whole thing. Some and, people use it on social media when their husband tries to spout bullshit. <laughs> yeah, but we ignore those people. Um, you dickheads. But anyway, so I, I wanted to kind of explore the idea of one, uh, where did this come from? Two, is it, is it actually something new or is it a resurgence of something? Because most things in history we can look at and say, you know, that's come in waves. It, there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's a and, while. and third, you know, no matter which side of the fake news issue you fall on, I think we all agree there's a problem here. And so, what can we do societally yeah. to to fix it? You know. Okay. Okay. I don't know that we all agree there's a problem, but okay. Mm. So, well, maybe I, that's. I hadn't decided yet. Yeah. Oh, I, okay. I haven't heard the whole discussion, so. Uh, oh, I see. I know kind of where I'm where I'm sitting right now, but you know. All right. You're sit. You're sitting in the in the studio. I'm sitting in the studio. Yes. <laughs> Told you I knew. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So take it off. So, uh, take it off. During my research, I kind of found, uh, uh, three categories that I want to discuss. Two are, are much more prevalent historically. And I think here in a second, we'll talk about some of the history. Yeah. Um, and then the third one is going to be, uh, uh, the more modern one that I think has emerged that I think actually is the new thing. If it, if there is yeah, a new thing yeah. here. Uh, so the first one is called commercial fake news. Um, we see this all the time. If you've ever, uh, tried to search for a review on a product and you said, you know, this is the greatest product ever. And then you started digging and found out the website that put out the article was owned by the parent company. Yeah. Of- or if you've been on Facebook oh, yeah. for 15 minutes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the it idea here is that you, s- you spread a lie or maybe uh, exaggerate the truth to some degree, but your motivation is to make a profit. You're, sure. you're directly profiting from this lie. Um, this is this this is something that's happened forever. I think of uh, you know off the top of my head, I can think of in the uh, in the fifties and sixties. Uh, it, it was real big. It still is, but the idea of of using doctors to uh, uh, support a product. You can go oh, back. Yeah. You can go back to the fifties and find ads for cigarettes that uh, that are endorsed by by uh, by, by 
doctors now they're you know they're they're paid by the, by the cigarette yeah. companies. Well, well or, if if you watch uh, oh four out of five dentists agree. Yeah, uh, yeah. The King's Speech, I think the movie's called. Yeah, yeah, good movie. Yeah, uh, where you know the this guy is about to be king, but he has a terrible stutter. And uh, he goes to this one speech therapist, and he's smoking. He goes, "Why are you smoking?" He says, "A doctor said it'll help strengthen my lungs." Yeah, you know. Um, yeah. So, commercial fake news. Second, Makes sense to me. Exactly. I mean, I don't, I don't know why that guy was so uppity about it. I think, I mean, sucking is bound to help, right? Yeah, exactly. There were other things. Is that what you've been into. telling him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, th- next, we have strategic fake news, and and this is really where we get into like. The Russia scandal, if there is a scandal to be had there. Uh, we get into uh, uh, propaganda machines. Yeah. So the idea here is we, we spread a falsehood, and the intent of the falsehood is to push a political agenda. Um, you know, well, I, I, let, 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 let's be careful with the term falsehood, because a lot of times it's not really a falsehood. Or not it's, entirely it, it's, false. It, it's incomplete information, usually. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, I, I, I think now of... Um, and gosh, I don't have the names with me, but uh, the Spanish-American War, uh, there was a popular publisher who was trying to promote... William Randolph Hearst. Yeah, he was yeah. trying to promote war, and um, he was asking an illustrator to get him pictures. Yeah, Rabbi B- Remington uh, yeah. was, was the artist. Yeah. If you know, if you know your, uh, your, your all the old cowboy paintings and stuff, those yeah. are Remingtons, if you yeah. don't know what they're... So, so he was trying to get Remington to put out these pictures of all these horrible stuff that... The, the Spanish are doing. He said, well, there will be no war. And, and, and Hearst replies to him, you get me the pictures. I'll get you the yeah, war. You furnish the pictures. I'll furnish the war. Great yeah. line. And, uh, he and, put out a picture of like this, this white woman being strip searched yeah, by the, by the Spanish. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And, uh, well, there was a Spanish American war as we know through history. Yeah. So. He, did, he did that one. He, uh, uh, he, by the way, he also sent Stephen Crane, the, the famous artist or, or author down as a journalist. And Stephen Crane just made up out of out of out of whole cloth made up battles down there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they talk about you know the gleaming uh, uh, the gleaming helmets and swords and all. That. There were no helmets and swords like that. They, 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 he was describing a battle from a generation earlier. Right. Uh, but but people saw that and they thought these barbarians were there and it worked. It 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 mm-hmm. that along with you know the the main blew up in Havana Harbor pushed us into the Spanish American War. Yeah. Well. Which, it- by the way, I don't know if you're aware we have. In the 90s, they sit down uh, uh, scuba divers in Havana Harbor and check that. And it turns out that the, the USS Maine blew up from the munitions uh, yeah. uh, closet inside the ship. It yeah, wasn't it a, was not sabotage. It, it was not sabotage, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and a really interesting thing can happen where you have strategic fake news and commercial fake news where they're trying to push a political agenda, but there is a profit involved. So you can have kind of an overlap there yeah. where, where, where they're both involved. Would this be uh, uh would this be the same thing as like well I know not the same but would would like a false flag uh situation fall under this? Oh, I think so. I think okay. so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to explain what a false flag is? Or you yeah. So or they could just it. go listen to our episode yeah. on false flags. Yeah. Yeah. We no, we kidding. did an episode, but that was like two years ago. It was wasn't a long time ago. Yeah. 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 I don't even know if it's still up. It but anyway, be. a a false flag. Uh, the idea is that the government puts out a a, a story. That uh, isn't necessarily true, or has a truth but has false details behind it. Or um, orchestrates a fake incident. The yes. wag the dog thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, very much. Uh, you don't know that 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 saying. It's the thought. Uh, there, there was a movie out called Wag the Dog, but it goes back to an old saying that uh, uh, you know, so instead of the dog waving the tail, you know, so that would be the way things are supposed oh, to work. Oh, the tail waves the dog. The tail wa- wags the I dog. Got you. So you're you're working it backwards. Yeah. yeah. I see. Yeah, and and so, you know, usually this is to promote some kind of uh, sympathy or, or action by yeah. the electorate. Um, you know, and it's really funny because the term gets a really bad name because conspiracy theorists have taken and run with it with stuff that is like <sighs> yeah, black it, helicopters. Yeah. yeah, it's ridiculous stuff. But Flutter. but but you know there 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 have been there have been cases of this. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh in, in, in our own uh, in our own nation's history, there are some cases that, that we can prove now. Uh, sometimes it, it's, it's, it's inadvertent. I think uh, I think of World War One. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Americans didn't want to get into World War One, but the British intercepted this telegram from uh, from from a, a German ambassador to a Mexican ambassador, uh, and and these are these are pretty low level guys. And the German ambassador's name was Zimmerman. And in this telegram, he he tells the uh, the Mexican government that uh, uh, if they would declare war on the United States on the side of Germany, 
that when the war was over, Germany would ensure that they get all their lost territories. Uh, uh, you know, we have a different name for those. We call it Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, Utah, California. You know, it's that like whole area. a lot of it's the US. Southwest United yeah. States. Uh, well, that was that was never agreed to. It never went to a high level. It wasn't an official uh, uh, message. It yeah, was, this was it, this guy talking out of was, his ass. It was two guys talking to each other, but the British intercepted it, and instead of uh, instead of Giving, sending it to President Wilson himself, the British uh, sent it to every major newspaper in the United States, and suddenly all the newspapers said, uh, you know, ran with this headline that that Mexico is going to ally with Germany and steal half the United States. Suddenly we were ready to go to war. Yeah. I think that's a false flag. Yeah, I right. mean, even if it's based on a, a, a something that really <laughs> happened, the way they used it was 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 clearly clearly not not accurate. Right. 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 Um, so the, the, the third group here, and this can have overlap with the other two, is subjective fake news. And the idea with subjective fake news is that you take facts. Yeah. And you puzzle them together in such a way that it paints a partial or maybe even untrue picture of the world the way it is. Um, but you can all you can point to all these facts. This is this is this is very much what many conspiracy theories do. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, flat Earth. Flat you know, Earth. They'll point to to you know the fact the fact that you can look out on the horizon and it looks flat. That yeah. is a fact. That is a fact. Yes. They will point to the fact that uh, things always fall down. You know yeah. they'll. It doesn't. Fall, it doesn't fall up when you're in Australia. Yeah, exactly. So, so they'll point to all these facts, and but they'll completely ignore other facts, like, like gravity, satellites. <laughs> you know, they ignore those. Those, those are 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 not P- pictures taken from space. Yes. Yeah. Um, all faked. All faked. All faked. Yeah. yeah. But uh, CGI. Yes. In 1963. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, and and this is something that that happens uh, happens a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kennedy assassination, I think, is a, is an example of this yes. where they cherry pick things. Uh, uh, but but even beyond the conspiracy conspiracy theories, we see this all the time in in uh, in modern politics. Yeah, what yeah. do you think the uh, you know think of stem cells, stem cell research? The, where you know the right will, will cherry pick certain uh, certain parts to try and say that that stem cell research is is murder, yeah. and then the left will, will, will cherry pick certain ones and say no stem cell research is the you know the only way to cure cancer. You know, right. when, when really you know there's there's probably a little truth there on both sides. Yeah, yeah. Well, in, in one place we right. see it a lot. And I, w- I want to talk about this a lot more in depth later in the show, but you'll have a story. Uh, the story will be uh, some guy was walking down the street. Uh, somebody came behind him and grabbed him. He didn't know who it was. He turned around and hit the guy. Uh, the guy ended up being a cop. He thought it was, um, a suspect or something and ends up shooting the guy because the guy's, you know, trying to hit him. And you'll have two different newspaper running the same stories with facts. Cop shoots another black man in New York. And the other yeah. side is, uh, a black man assaults cop and gets shot. And that's that, though, you know, you know, e- even beyond that, I can remember uh, during the election, uh, there was a I want to say it was a Wall Street Journal, but don't don't don't, don't I don't want to quote on that. There was an article about uh, it was the exact same article, but the headlines and the pictures were different in Texas copies of it versus New York copies where, you know, one had a very had, had a very positive view of, of the Democrat side and had a very positive view of the Republican side. Are you talking about the one where Trump went down and spoke to the Mexican president's name? Yes. Who I don't remember. Yes. So that actually, um, the story about them sending two different headlines to yeah. two different demographics yeah. is actually untrue. Really? One it's of fake those, news. Yes. Really? And I, I, I yes. researched that whenever it came out and, 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 and saw that stuff. One of them was the first run of the day. Yeah. The other was the second run. Well, well, so but, one but, was, but, but again, it, it's still the same. It's still the same situation. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah, used exactly. To see, I used to see that all the time when I lived in Atlanta. Uh, when I was in high school, there was a uh, there were two papers in Atlanta back then: the Atlanta Journal and mm-hmm. the Atlanta Constitution. They were owned by the same company, and uh, one had a very conservative leaning, yeah. the other had a very liberal leaning. Telling and, the same story, and they would they would run the same articles a lot of mm-hmm. times with different different ideas. Well, and yeah. I think on, on that particular one, if I remember correctly. 
Uh, the reason they had two different leanings was something had happened during the day that changed. Yeah. One was like. Yeah. Uh, it makes me feel better because I've always kind of trusted the Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Well, and one of them, I think, was when he was like going into the meeting. And one of them was after he had come out yeah. of the meeting and they had heard from the Mexican president. Yeah. And, yeah. I, don't, I researched that when it first came out and I didn't find that. Now yeah. I haven't looked at it in years yeah. since. Yeah. Then, it came out a little bit later than that. Yeah. Um, but that's what I found to be really interesting was that there was this story about this fake news and yeah. the, this this spin that they're putting on it that ended up being fake news itself. That's interesting. Yeah. That's inter- interesting. I'm glad you glad you corrected me on that. Yeah, so so we have this really interesting culmination of events that I think has allowed for this third type of fake news. One is we have access to more facts than we ever sure. had before. So the the scope of facts we can cherry pick from is a lot broader. Yep. Secondly, we have these really powerful search engines. So we can find the facts that we want quickly. Think of the yeah, yeah. if Google was a guy video. I yeah. love this. And the yeah. And the chick comes in and she is like, vaccines cause autism. And he's like, actually. <laughs> and she's like, vaccines cause autism. And he's like, there's like this giant stack of stuff yeah. saying that they don't. And she's adamant. And he's like Fine. Here's the one. <laughs> yeah. And she said, "Told you." Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Those, those are those are great videos. But uh, mm, they are. But yeah. So we have we have um, all these facts to choose from now. These search engines that allow us to quickly get the facts we want, and we have these social media uh, uh, platforms that allow us to broadcast our voice widely, and somehow insulate ourselves in these bubbles. That agree with us, and and they're programmed to do so. That's, that's yeah. true. There, there's also the other fact that that uh, you know, uh, this might not be something that y'all have even considered. I don't I don't know because y'all are y'all are just enough younger than me. But there's just so many more news outlets now. Oh yeah. You know, when I was a kid, uh, you know, I even even as late as 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 you know, when I was nineteen twenty, I read the paper every day because yeah. that's how you you know you it's how you how you got the news, and. When I was a kid, you know, you had three channels. I remember when when CNN first came out, mm-hmm. and we had twenty four hour news. And you know, for a year or two, it was it was good news. But it was you could turn on any time of the day, and you got the same same thirty minutes of news. Right. Uh, but because they're now competing, and there's a business of news, you've got to do something else. Yeah. And then beyond that, we've taken news channels, Fox News, mm-hmm. MSNBC News, and news channels are no longer just doing news; they're doing commentary. Yeah, and there that 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 creates a a a, a, a a a kind of disconnect in us because it must be true. We I grew up watching Walter Cronkite. Everything Walter Cronkite said had to be true. Yeah. on the news. Well, we give that credibility mm-hmm. to these people, but they're not trying to do news. Sean Hannity is not trying to do news. No, Sean Hannity is is a commentary a yeah. commentator. Well, and I think that's that's going to be a marked difference between. Um, your parents' generation, your generation, and then kind of John, the millennials and younger. Um, in that we've grown up with news commentary. That's yeah. all, yeah. that's, that was, that's yeah. news. That's and, all we know. Yeah. And we've never grown up with the idea that you just, whatever they say on the news is the truth. Yeah. Um, and, and so I think you're, uh, your generation, particularly, I think, is in a weird we are. position. We are. We're, we're, we were. You're we, in that transition stage. We were stage. raised that you trust this stuff. Yeah. And I think uh, I think think the next generation, the uh, you know the millennial generation and, and and beyond, is is much more astute about this and less trusting of it because they've had to be. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and and a lot of this fake news, if you look at it, a lot of it is 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 absorbed and regurgitated. Not by millennials. Mm-hmm. A lot of it's being absorbed and regurgitated by my generation and the baby boom generation yeah. beyond me because they've, you know, it's written down. It must be true. Yeah. Our friends don't pay attention to the news. We don't watch it. Yeah. We don't get the newspaper. We don't care. Yeah. We had a discussion with a friend of ours who's probably 10 years younger, nine to 10 years younger than us, um, where he was asking, like, like my son's age. <laughs> where um, he was asking, like, where do y'all, where do y'all get your news from? I'm, you know, he was trying to become more aware of current events and everything, and and wanted to know where it was that 
we were getting our news from. And so we ended up having a, a lengthy ish conversation about like, well, if you go to this place, you'll see it's got a right spin on it, but generally they're pretty good. If you go to this place, they've got a left spin. But you know, if you, if you go to both of them, you'll get kind of a, uh, you'll be able to piece together something. This place is pretty, uh, you know, it's pretty neutral. So is this place stay away from this one and 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 this one. <laughs> Well, and, and more than that, one that she mentioned, uh, and we've mentioned him on the show here a few times, but somebody who's become one of the biggest names on YouTube, Philip DeFranco, mm -hmm. for trying really hard to be that Walter Cronkite. Now, he'll come out sometimes with, with commentary, but he's, he's always explicit. really explicit. Yeah. This is my commentary. This is not part of the story. Um, whereas, uh, you know, that... That is not generally what's happening on the news these days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's actually something I kind of wanted to touch on in the uh, commercial fake news part of it. Um, there has been, and, and you guys are unlikely, I think, to be aware of this, um, given some of your demographic data. But in the YouTube makeup tutorial sphere. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, you're familiar? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do yeah. you think these eyebrows are natural? That's I, a good point. I, I saw the Gene Simmons shows how to put kiss makeup on. Is that what yeah. you're talking about? Oh, okay. No. But anyway. Um, That's the extent of my makeup <laughs> tutorials. So the makeup companies are sending like PR packages out to all the mm. major um, YouTube beauty people. Um, and there are a lot of things that are kind of happening because there was a, a time period where you started seeing these like rave reviews for these specific brands that a lot of times ended up being junk and crap. And there was kind of an upswell of anger about it. You know, these people were going out and spending their hard earned money on expensive makeup that ended up being shit. And the, the community, both the YouTubers and the makeup companies have kind of responded in what I think is a really healthy way and a way that I think we're going to see battling this commercial fake news stuff. Um, in that they'll send this PR out and they're like, we want an honest review. Um, anytime that these YouTubers are doing something that is sponsored where they are actually paying them, um, they are really upfront about it in the beginning of the video, throughout the video, in case, you know, you kind of skip the beginning or something like that. You know that you know that you know that this is sponsored material and you're getting some slant to it. Um, but the brands themselves are embracing these honest reviews from these people who have huge followings. I, I, and they're a lot of times kind of like taking those, those responses and tweaking their products to I'm, be better. I'm glad you brought that up. I, I, I'm a, uh, I'm an avid, uh, um, uh, podcast listener. Right. Before that, I was an avid AM radio listener. Because right. I like talk, talk radio. I like that, like that format. But one of the things that I've, that I've always drove me crazy were the, when they would have the drop in ads, that you were three quarters of the way through before you realized it was exactly. an ad. Exactly. Oh, it that sounds would piss like, me off. it sounds like news. It sounds, Glenn Beck was notorious for this kind yeah. of stuff, just dropping stuff in, uh, that, that wasn't, uh, wasn't news. And, and you see, you see that sometimes on podcasts still. Well, and, yeah. and at least self reported on YouTube. And another, another big thing I'm seeing is these companies saying, we want a sponsor. So you go ahead, use our product, let us know what you think, and here's your options. Uh, sometimes they say review it anyway, but but a lot of them are saying, here's your options. Review it, let us know what you think, tell us what you think. If you actually like it, we want you to do a review. If you don't like it, we don't want you to do a review. But we're going to pay you for your time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We we just, you know, yeah. and, and tell us what you don't like about it, and we're willing to work with you. Exactly. Yeah. That, and it, which is fair. Yeah. yeah. You know, we had a discussion on this show when we first got started of whether we would uh, put would do beer uh, ads or accept yeah. that stuff. And, and, you know, we, that was kind of the, kind of where we came from was. Yeah. Cause we could probably get like yeah. free beer for the show, but it's not fair. Exactly. AB and Bev, talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're ever going to support this show. No. Uh, in fact, they, but they may have their lobbyists out there right now <laughs> trying to get laws passed to have us removed from the air. <clears throat> I hope I didn't just give them an idea. As if we have enough listeners that Ann Bev cares. We will pirate radio this summer, <laughs> bitch. As I, if we aren't already. I, wh wh while you talk about pirate radio, I kind of wanted to, uh, I don't know if this is a place you want to do it, mm -hmm. but I want to talk about, about gorilla news a little bit. Um, I think that, well, let's do this. Um, let's go ahead. We'll rate beer. the beer. 
Uh, we'll talk about guerrilla news. I actually have some historical cases I want to talk about, yeah, including yeah. Elders of Zion. Yeah, I want to talk about that. Um, a bit. And then I have a more modern kind of contrast I want to talk about uh, on that racial stuff I was talking about. And then there's some stuff about the dangers of this fake news <laughs> culture yeah. that I want to talk yeah. about. Yeah. And we can close out. Yeah, sounds good? like yeah. a sounds plan. Good to me. Who wants to start the rating of this beer? I'll do it. Okay. okay. I'm just, I'm laughing. Sorry. That seems to be a thing. Mike always asks who wants to start. You always look at me. And I, can't start. Yeah. I, I don't, that or I don't I look mind starting. Quietly. I just, uh, you know, whatever. So this has been really interesting. First of all, I, I, I like how smooth it is for a 7.0. Yeah, it's easy to drink. Yeah, and it's a farmhouse ale, which is, is categorically a little harder for me to rate. Right. Yeah, because if you're not I, familiar, traditionally a farmhouse ale yeah. is like, Whatever you have, you just put in. Isn't so it, the ratio of like hops to grains to whatever is going to vary. Isn't farmhouse house L also traditionally uh, air fermented too? Uh, open air fermented? Probably. Yeah. I don't know yeah. that to be yeah. a fact. Yeah, I, I think I think traditionally it was. I don't think that's a we'll requirement go with that. anymore. So Hashtag I'm I'm, I'm remembering back to beer yeah. beer camp we went to and, and had a discussion. I'm pretty sure that that's what we were told by the deep the guy from Deep Ellum. That Probably. sounds yeah. familiar, but I'm yeah. not yeah. positive. Okay. okay, so this beer is like 60% mouthfeel, and the rest is like a lightly flavored, uh, I'm going to say beer tea, and I don't mean that in, in, in a bad way. By the way, that's actually the way I was described on my Tinder account. Beer tea? No, 60% mouthfeel. <laughs> nice. Oh. <laughs> 60% mouthfeel. <laughs> but, I think your spelling feel differently. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, when you take it in, I mean, it, it's got some body to it. You can definitely tell you're drinking something more substantial, but there's not actually any kind of overwhelming flavor to it. It's very smooth. It's almost watery, yet... I say that it's a 7.0% ABV. So it's, it's a really interesting mixture of self contradiction. Mm. Um, all that said, uh, it's, it's a really interesting beer to drink. Uh, I would definitely recommend trying it, mm -hmm. but it's not a great beer to me. Uh, I'm going to give it a, uh, I'll, I'll give it around the middle. I'll give it a two five. I okay. mean, it's, it's not bad. It's not great, okay. but you want Mike? me to go next? Go ahead. Uh, I, I will tell you now that I have a suspicion this is going to be one of those beers that we do where we are all over the damn place. Yeah. Uh, just, just, just from, from, from the looks I'm seeing on Anna's face and what you did, because I love this beer. I really okay. do. I think this is an outstanding beer from, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to get kind of weird here like I do sometimes from the, from the opening experience of just looking at the can. This mm -hmm. has been a great, a great beer. Uh, and, and that's part of the experience to me too. Um, you know, it, it, whenever, whenever you poured it, 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 it poured well, uh, the, the head had a, had a, even had a good flavor to it. Yeah. It wasn't an ashy head like some of right. them are. Uh, I think I, your, your idea of it being, being watery or thin, I think that's, that, that's there. It, it's not a heavy, a thick beer at all, yeah. but it's still it's got a, weighty a beer but for it's sure. still got a great, uh, feel to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I like the smell of it. I like the, the the taste. It's got the bell curve that I like. It's not uh, not a really pronounced bell curve. It's not. It doesn't have really big highs mm -hmm. and, and, and deep troughs, but but there is a bell curve there. And, and when it's over with, you can it kind of loses you a little at a time. Um, there there's just there's not much about this beer that I don't like. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a beer that that if I find it again, I will buy it. Particularly in the summertime, I yes. think it's a. a, a Outstanding beer. I think it would, you know, I could give this to my friends and be proud that I gave it to them. Yes. Uh, I think that it's got a, I think it's got a wide uh, appeal. A var variance of people that would like it. I think Absolutely. Your, your beer lovers are going to like it. And I think you're, you know, you're, you're not so fancy. You're Anna if and they Bev drink people. Budweiser. I think it'll even, be a little bit of a stretch, yeah. but if they drink Bud Light, it's too much. Yeah, I, I think even I think even your Anbev people will like this beer. Okay, <laughs> I, I, it's 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 a it's an all encompassing beer that 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 would work in almost any situation. Mm. Uh, so I'm going to go go a pretty high rating on this one. I'm going to go three three. All right. So, um, whenever you went ahead and said that like we were going to be all over the place, I went ahead and put my rating in. It's a three point um, See, I thought you were going to be lower than John. I. Really like this beer. Um, one of the first things that I noted whenever we started drinking this was it, it tastes like whole grain crackers. <laughs> I don't, I don't get that. We'll get into the racial stuff later. Just yeah. whoa. <laughs> I don't even. 
know where that falls. Anyway, not the, <laughs> not the point here. Not the point. Um, but it does to me. It tastes like whole grain crackers. And by that, I mean. Everybody knows crackers taste like white bread. <laughs> Um, so by that I mean <laughs> the uh, the hot profile is very low, the grain profile is very high. Um, I tend to these days I tend to like grainier beers than the hoppier ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I can still appreciate a good IPA, but. Um, I am much more in favor of something like a Hefeweizen or a uh, Pilsner or something like that. Um, that's kind of what I'm preferring, especially during the summer. Um, the hops have a much warmer feel to them. So I, I'm really appreciating this one. Um, I do have to disagree on the wateriness of it. It's not weighty. It's not heavy, um, which I think may be what you're attempting to describe there. Maybe I'm wrong. Um but it does have a good mouthfeel. I think it's got a good flavor. Um, and it's got a, a bold, complex flavor that manages not to be overwhelming. Well, when I was saying water, I meant, I actually meant that while it does have complexity in the flavor, mm-hmm. there's not a lot of it. It's almost like you took a, a little flavor bag of something, you know, and kind of dipped it in there and flavored your water. Okay. Yeah, that's the, the tea statement. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's got a good level of carbonation. Uh, like you said, it I doesn't didn't, have. I didn't bring that up, but the carbonation is just perfect. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I did appreciate the carbonation. Though. Yeah. Um, so all in all, I really like it. It gets a 3.0. Um, I think there are a few things that it could do to um, to bring that up a little bit. Um, I'd say have a little bit more oomph with the flavor. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Make a can that, for some reason, can pour straight. Um, it doesn't feel weird. I was sober when we started this. I don't know why I couldn't pour it into my glass. I, I spilled mine, too. Okay. I, don't, I don't know. I, I figured out why the can feels weird, by the it's way. The it's the thing coating. that they have covered It's not powder on. coating. No? They took a shrink wrap and stuck it over there instead of, like, printing oh, okay. on the can. That's what most of them do. Yeah, it feels like powder coat. Okay. That's Maybe it. it's just an off-brand plastic. I don't it's know. Who knows? Anyway, not the point. Very good beer. Try it. Uh, if you don't like it, it will be a fun experience anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, if, if, update lawnmower. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you don't like it, there's something wrong with you. Uh, um, yes. All right. Uh, lawnmower beer. Hell yes. This is a lawnmower beer. Beyond that, if you provide me this beer, I'll mow your lawn. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, We're getting more of this beer, baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, I, 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 Only because we can't get Jonah this beer. Let me, let me put it this way. I'll mow your lawn until I'm out of the beer. So you've got to provide me enough beer to That's finish mowing all the good. lawn. That's okay. Cool. Okay. So, lawn more, uh, date? Uh, date, um, you know, I, I'm actually going to put this, uh, surprisingly early in the pack. Uh, I, I think that this is a safe enough beer. I don't think anyone's going to hate this beer and run screaming. Uh, and beyond that, I think it's a really interesting one to get to know whoever you're taking out. Uh, I don't, don't try and wow anyone with this beer, because as you saw, there's some variance in how it's rated. But you can definitely learn something about their beer flavor. So I'm going to say, you know, second, third. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to like, Bet you know, place your bet on it, but yeah. you know, I'd, I'd, I'd put this in any date beer, yeah. Okay, there is an interesting spice profile that it's got, um, that is really muted. I think if they brought that out just a little bit, it would just catapult this beer into a different realm. That's but- actually your uh, your description on your Instagram, isn't it? An interesting spice profile that's just a little muted. <laughs> Yes, that's what it is. But the more important question is, will it get you laid? Yes. 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 Me. But um, it'll get you laid. <laughs> yes, no. Um it'll, it'll, it'll get it'll get you laid by me while I mow your lawn. Mm. We're getting a push whole- lawnmower or ride lawnmower? Riding lawnmower. Riding okay, lawnmower. I was yeah, gonna yeah. say push lawnmower <laughs> seems a little <laughs> tricky. But uh, we're getting a whole lot of this beer, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and a riding lawnmower. It's yes, a whole lot cheaper than yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, but anyway, no, I think that this isn't a beer that is just going to seal, seal the deal for you. It is not a Cosby beer, which is always nice. Yeah. Um, it's a creeper, though. It is, for sure. That's a new that, that, that that's a new level of uh, in, in our beer rating. This is a creeper beer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so... Uh, it is high quality enough that I think if you're already doing well, that it's going to help you over that hump to get to the hump. 
Um, however, help you on the hump. I, I, was just, I was just thinking with that description, we should call it a Harvey Weinstein beer. There you go. If you're already doing well, it'll get you over the hump. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> um, however, it'll already be wealthy though. Yeah. It's not going to get you there on its own. Right. So good beer. It'll get you late if you've got something going for you already. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you were wanting to pick up after this. Yeah, I, I, I really hadn't, hadn't thought about this uh, before the show. But while we were talking, I got thinking about this, uh, you know, the, 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 the way things are changing and the problems we have with so many, uh, you know, we, we kind of uh, leaned on that there's so many news uh, casts out there, so many news organizations that it creates a problem of personalized news. But the other side of that is the fact that we have so much guerrilla news out there. And what I mean by that is, are regular people doing, uh, you know, providing information. So are you talking about like whenever somebody sees something happening in front well, of them that yeah. they think to be newsworthy well, and they pull out their phone? I am to an extent. I'm, I'm talking about the fact that, you know, uh, think about the, the Arab Spring a few years ago. Oh, okay. We learned about the Arab Spring because people had the nerve to get out there with their cameras yeah. and take pictures. And they were interviewing people on the streets and we were getting firsthand news. Yeah. That was guerrilla news. And that okay. was... We're not going through any newscasts. We're not going through editors. We're just going to put it out there for everybody. Mm -hmm. I think podcasts are oftentimes guerrilla news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Things that, that can't get past past the, uh, the editors, can't get past the censors. We can't get past the fucking editors. YouTube can be can be guerrilla news. <laughs> well, going back to Philip DeFranco, uh, one of the things he's doing right now is building his own app and asking people to go out there and be the news anchors and make Which stories sent them to him. I think yeah. that is genius. Uh, and, and I think that that, that may be... There's a danger to that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but that that may be, you know, the the C-SPAN of the next generation. I always, I always said that when I'm when, with news, I want to watch C-SPAN because there's no commentary. I just have to watch it live. Yeah. Well, stick a video camera in there and shut the fuck up. Yeah. That's what uh, what guerrilla news is to me. A yeah. lot of times. Now, sometimes it's not. Sometimes mm -hmm. guerrilla news is very cherry picked. Oh, because yeah. Because there is no there is no check on that person. They can put whatever they want out, and, right? Which could be dangerous. So is that going to change this idea of fake news? Uh, what, what do you think? Well, I think it will. Uh, I think, I think it has to. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, the question is, do we have a reputation-based system where people who are doing this get reputations and we, we rate them on that? Or is it just that we kind of learn like, okay, 20% of this is bullshit, but it's still better than the, you know, whatever percentage was before when it was, when it was uh, designer news. You well, know? There's no gatekeeper. Yeah. 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 No watchers. I just wanted to kind of yeah. touch on that a little bit. No, no, no. I think that's great. Well, uh, I think it, it it is reputation. I, I don't think that we have seen a means by which guerrilla news has not been reputation based. Mm -hmm. um, because you've got things like YouTube, um, Twitter retweets, uh, or Twitter. We had a Periscope there for a little while. Is that still a thing? I don't know. Uh, not Comment really. down below. Tell us if it's a thing. Cause yeah, I, we don't use it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't. We did for a minute, and then we stopped. Um, but anyway, you know, you have the number of views that something got that is uh, tends to be something that people give a lot of credence to as far as how valid it is. Um, you've got the thumbs up, thumbs down system. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess Reddit is very much the same way. So it is the all The front page of the internet. Yeah. Let, let, you know. let, let me ask you this, though. Our show. We, I think we have made a conscious decision mm -hmm. not to be a newsy show, to be right. to, to be something else. But would you call us, I, 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 under this definition that we're looking at, are we guerrilla news? At all? I don't think, no. <coughs> no, I don't think we're guerrilla news. I, th I think we're philosophy. And the reason is we're not breaking any stories. Uh, well, we're, we're commentating and, uh, yeah. and Yeah, we analyze. are commentating. But, yeah. we, but, 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 but there's always, uh, there, you know, the, it's editorializing. Yeah. yeah. We, we, don't, we, don't need, we don't pretend to be... Uh, uh, you know, just reporting something. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. I was just kind of curious where y'all thought we would fall in that. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, I do want to move on to a little bit of historical stuff and kind of move up to uh, some of the modern day yeah. dilemma we see. I want to go to a story from actually your childhood, Mike. Um, Trent, Italy, 1475. <laughs> um, I wondered if that's where we were about to go. <laughs> He made it worse to me. I was thinking, so, oh, we're going to talk about the Model T Ford. Oh, no, we're going to go back to before <laughs> Columbus discovered America. No, uh, 1475? 1455. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Okay. Even 75 would be before that. So 1475. It's oh, 75. Oh, yeah, 1492. Yeah. Yeah, so 1475, uh, This in Trent, Italy, this two-year-old child goes missing. And uh, this preacher, uh, Bernardino uh, Defector, 
I think that's how you say that. Uh, let me know if it's not. Uh, starts a rumor that the local Jews killed him and drank his blood. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I almost spit out my coffee because yeah, I'm out I've, of beer. I've heard this story before. Yeah, so he starts this and starts preaching, and and the whole thing kind of goes. Uh, 1400s version of viral. Yeah. Uh, the local prince actually orders all the Jews rounded up, tortured, and burned at the stake over this oh. thing. Um, but it was all done over this trusted source in the community, which for years and years always was the church. I mean, yeah. that was the source of news. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, you know, I don't know what, uh, what, uh, Bernardino's motivations were here maybe he had a grudge against the jews maybe somebody told him something i don't know no, I think they were it, stealing I, some of his souls I, I think it goes back to the fact that the early catholic church they're they you know we give nicknames to things and they refer to the jews as the christ killers mm. you know that they're, they're the ones that cheered to to to, to uh, re, uh release barabbas instead of, of jesus of nazareth yeah. so that they were always kind of going against the jews mm. yeah yeah that and they wanted their land ah uh. you know uh so everybody's trying to get their land. Everybody's trying to get their land. Um, so, you know, I, I look at this and I, I look at this as a very early version of fake news. I mean, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, and, and trusted liars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this was all based on a trusted source. And what we see here is one man making a decision, maybe even an organization, you know, you could argue, but, but ultimately one man uh, saying something and ordering the mass murder of a group of people in a localized area. Yep. Um, so as we can see, this idea of, of trusted news editorializing something or flat out lying, uh, can be a rather dangerous thing. We see this a little bit later, um, in the Salem witch trials. Now there's a little bit different thing going on here because they were all on drugs. Maybe, maybe, (laughs) maybe there's, there's, there's a lot of speculation that, that it was, uh, uh, Can we at least give them the credit they were unintentionally on drugs? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. it never starts yeah, intentionally. But bread, bread for me. Yeah, yeah, it does. A lot of drugs start intentionally. No, they're all, nope. They're, you never take drugs intentionally. The, the ones I took were very intentional. See? Yeah. Yeah. But it started. Took, took, yeah. long time ago. Yes. Yeah. But anyway, but we see the Don't same. come and arrest me. Mike's yeah. only on beer now. I'm only on beer. We see the Salem Witch Trials, and you know... We don't have, you know, we weren't there, so we can't say for sure, but I think we can probably guess that a witch didn't run around stealing the men's penises and hiding them in bird's nests for other men to come find and put on. Not uh, during that time, at least. No, it wouldn't. It was years before that technology came about. I, yeah. I, I hate it when they put my penis in a bird's nest. <laughs> yeah, the birds peck at it and, you know, but, but no, I mean, we, we see here this. <laughs> That's why it came back with sores on it. <laughs> Yeah, we see, yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah. We we see here the, the this whole um where people again can get sensationalized and get into frenzy and go on riots and, and mass murder. People put them on trial even yeah. uh, over over this kind of stuff. You know, uh l- later on in life. I, I don't know if I would call that fake news because it was it was a you know, it was three good girl I think it was three. It was it was a few girls that did this. Uh later on in life the uh one of the girls on her deathbed, confessed that she uh, that they had made the story up about the uh, you know if you don't I don't know if you know this, if everybody knows it but the story was that their their nanny who was a a, a slave uh, was was seen kissing the ass of the devil that was one of the stories yeah um, and you know they put her on trial for witchcraft and in the middle of the trial the the kids would start screaming and going into hysterics saying that they saw uh, spirits and they saw all kinds of stuff. And, and, and the lady was killed. And then 18 other people, including one dog, were killed during the Salem witch trials for witchcraft. They hung a dog. Yes. Uh, I want to see a witch dog. Uh, but later on in life, the, uh, one of the girls confessed and she said that, that in reality they were, uh, they were just mad at their nanny because she had been too strict on them and they wanted to get rid of her. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if I'd call that fake news so much as asshole kids, uh, you know, that, that we still see today. And I, I bet that, mm, never mind, I'm going to shut my mouth. I have a hard time calling that fake news because it's not an organization doing it. But, right. But, but I, I see the connection. Well, and it's not a trusted source because I think yeah. that's one of well, the... Well, it was trusted by them well, because they, they, they convicted and, and murdered them. Well, it. I mean, they. And, and you trust any murder. white person over a black person in those times. Um, but I think generally... I'm glad she added in those times. Yeah. <laughs> yes, in those times. Yeah. Um, 
Wow. Don't, don't worry. We, we won't clip that. <laughs> I appreciate that. I may clip it. <laughs> God damn it, John. Um, but I think that's one of the uh, significant criteria, particularly these days, is that uh, it's tending to come from sources that we trust yeah. or sources that we trust, even if maybe we shouldn't trust them. Yeah, 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 I think so. I, I'm going to skip over the, pro, the the elders of Zion and come right back to it. I want to talk about this one first. Uh, here's another interesting one. It's kind of reverse fake news. Uh, Galileo. Yeah. So Galileo was accused of heresy, uh, not actually when he published his paper, but after people started citing his yeah, paper. years later, yeah. Um, well, yeah, once it for, becomes relevant. Yeah, for, you know, making such horrible claims as the, the Earth revolves around the sun, yeah. a heliocentric uh, uh, solar system. Um, now... We look at this, I mean, his, his science was sound, and actually, if we go back and look at the details... Soundish. Soundish. Yeah. Sound yeah. He had, for the time. He had, a, he, had a, he had a round orbit instead of an... Instead of an it was more yeah, sound. But, but it was yeah. more sound, yeah. yeah. Um, He's later on going to be disproved by the people, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. But we look at it, and, and actually, a lot of the motivation for the trials had to do with the the king feeling insulted and the church feeling yeah. insulted. Yeah. Than, than actual uh, uh, rightness of his theory. Um, but we see a whole lot of propaganda put out against him. Um, do we do we consider that fake news? Yeah, that, there, there, there's so much misinformation about the Galileo story out there. Uh, Fill us in. Yeah, Galileo was, uh, he, he, he was put on trial for, for questioning. Uh, and ultimately house arrest. The, the geocentric. But, but, but his... If you're going to get put on trial, the way he got put on trial is the way to do it, okay? Because uh, he, he, the Pope actually was a friend of his, and mm-hmm. the Pope did not particularly want to do this. He had pressure put on him, uh, so he was, you know, he he was put on house arrest, and he was treated as kind of a royal guest of the Pope during this whole time. He wasn't allowed to publish anymore. He had to deny what he what, what he did. But he didn't really pay a, a different, right? You know, pay a pay a major penalty like he like didn't suffer what somebody who wasn't the friend of the Pope would have that, suffered. That, that's true, and, and and I think we need to point that out. Yeah, uh, I love the story, which is 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 probably apocryphal, but it's a great story that you know after Galileo uh, recanted his belief on his way out of the room, they said that uh, that he that he, he he whispered under his breath, where just the people around him could hear. Said, uh, said, but it does revolve around the sun. Yeah. Uh, you know, I hope that's true. I hope it's true, but it's probably apocryphal. But yeah, I, I think, I think that, that it would be fake news to the extent that they, they demonized him. But again, they demonized him with the best facts of the time. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 they were using real facts. They weren't, they weren't just making stuff up about him. He really said that stuff and they put it out there. Mm-hmm. They just thought he was wrong. Yeah. yeah. You want to talk about the Elders of Zion? I do. One of the most uh, interesting books of it, uh, I've, I've ever ever heard of in my life. Uh, if if you ever venture into the dark, to me the darkest corners of, of the internet with the uh, the Holocaust deniers and the anti-Semitic side, and I've I've been over there and looked at that stuff because of school stuff and I'm interest in that. Uh, they quote this book, The Protocols of the Elders of Zion, which is purportedly an ancient uh, Jewish book that talks about how the Jews would intentionally uh, 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 cause depravity among the Gentiles and try and create moral depravity. And the Jews' ultimate goal was to, to collapse the, the, the Gentile society and, and rule everything. Uh, by the way, you mentioned earlier this this idea of this this priest that was talking about the Jews drinking the blood of children. They quote that in the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, and they talk about how the uh, the bread, the matzah bread that the the Jews ate, was made with the blood of innocents, oh, uh, and all this stuff. Well, this has been quoted, and it's still quoted today by these anti-Semitic Holocaust denier people as their reasons for hating the Jews because they have this ultimate goal. Well, it turns out we know we know now we know for a fact that this book was commissioned by the Tsar of Russia in 1903 as justification for the Jewish pogroms, and they intentionally created this work as uh, 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 as, as a forgery, as fraud of what the what the Jews were trying to do. In 19, Why do my people end up at the middle of all this shit? In 1933, when the, when the Nazis came to power uh, in Germany. 
they made this a required text reading for the for their their elementary age kids. You wonder wow. how it was so easy for the for the Germans to uh, to, uh, to you know to, to turn <laughs> against the Jews. Well, they were they were taught this book. I think this is Before a great example. Or of when or after Hitler? Nin- 1933 is when Hitler came to power in the okay. Nazis, and and they they pushed it forward. Okay. Um, so so you know you had people that were coming up with this as a as a system. So it, it's invented in 1903. By 1933, it's influencing uh, uh, government policy in in the in in uh, Nazi Germany. By the way, Crazy. there's a, there's a lot of evidence that Hitler and the Nazis believed this was a real book, that they weren't using it as fake news, that they fell for it. Um, so you know that that shows how how fake news can affect it. Oh, the yeah. Holocaust could have been pushed by fake news. That's crazy to think. So, uh, but but still around today. So if you're out there and you have some crazy uh, uh, Holocaust denying anti-Semitic friend, first off, lose that friend. But second off, don't believe the protocols of the elders of Zion is a real book. Those dumbasses out there that believe that have no understanding of history. Came out in 1903. <laughs> All right. So kind of where I wanted to go from here, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, racial issues and how it relates to fake news, because I, I think it's actually more relevant than people give it credit for. Um, and I want to talk about three cases that had completely different outcomes whenever the, the investigations were done that seemed to be treated the same by extremists on both sides. Um, and we can also kind of end here in a little bit reference, oh, what was the... KKK rally that Trump f- refused to deny at first and then came back around and kind of denied it. Charlottesville? Charlottesville, yeah, yeah. yep. Anyway, so to start, uh, so the three cases, I'm going to mention them real quick and then we can go through the details of why they're different. Uh, Michael Brown, you may remember this from the hands up, don't shoot uh, uh, kind of rally. Eric Gardner, uh, you may associate with cigarette, right? Breathe. Yeah, I, choked, I can't breathe. Choked, yeah. Yep. And then Philando Castile, uh, yeah, yeah. the the guy in the car who yeah. had a license uh, a car- oh. license to carry, tried to pull it out and got shot. While his wife or girlfriend did he? Yes, yeah, st- what's her name? Star. Star, I think. Yes, I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, but anyway, she she had got the whole thing. On yeah, the phone. on Facebook Live. Yeah, yeah. yeah. talking about guerrilla uh, Gorilla media. News, yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, so and the- to be clear, was pulling out his license to carry, yeah. not his. Gun, yeah. That he was licensed. By the way, we we, we've got an episode on on those three things. I I don't know what it's called. You have to go find it, and you may have to be on uh, on Patreon to get to uh, Patreon to get to it. I don't. I don't remember. It's been so long. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, kind of jumping ahead to the conclusion, because now we know a few of the details of some of these cases. Michael Brown, hands up, don't shoot. So this became a huge thing. The story was some local people saw that you know. Uh, Michael Brown, he's walking down the street. This cop comes up to harass him. He, he maybe mouths off to him some. And the cop pulls out a gun. He puts his hands up and he says, don't shoot. And he shoots him. Dead on the street. Um, this actually w- was at a very relevant time period. Obama was president. And Obama at the time was pushing for two things. Racial equality issues and police accountability. These were two of his that main was, issues. And that was right after the beer summit uh, when he, uh, the, the college professor had been, uh, the black college professor had been, been profiled and he'd, he'd met with him about, you know, racial identity. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a, an issue the president was very uh, sympathetic to. No. Um, was very sympathetic to uh, at his time. An investigation is done by the police, as always is. But also an end of, Independent uh, investigation is done by the DOJ, pushed by Obama and his administration, yeah. by his hand selected. Who was the DOJ at the time? Oh, oh for fuck's sake. It was a black guy. Yeah, I can't remember his name now. It, was, it wasn't Eric. It wasn't. Yeah, it was Eric something. Eric. Um, I, I, Holder. Holder. Eric Holder. Eric Holder. Yes. Okay. So Thank Eric- God. <laughs> Thank God. Between the three of us, we got that. We got one yeah. name. It wasn't Eric. It was Eric. It was Eric Holder. I yeah. like that. <laughs> so Eric Holder. <laughs> Like pushes the, the investigation, who is also very sympathetic to some of these same issues. Yeah, yeah. The DOJ finds the same findings that the police force found, which is to say that what what they expect happen is he pulled up to talk to him. He was a suspect in a robbery that just happened moments before. Uh, 
all of a sudden, uh, Michael Brown starts getting real close to him. Uh, he reaches in to try and grab his gun. The police grabs his gun. He ends up getting shot in the 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 whole scuffle. Uh, so I think uh, reach back to grab his 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 ID. No, 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 no. Michael Brown put hands did he on the cop's gun? Oh yeah, yeah, on the, yeah. On the cop's gun. Yeah, yes. yeah okay, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. So so there wasn't hands up, and there wasn't no shoot. Next we have Eric Garner. Eric Gardner uh, had been previously arrested uh, on that same area for selling singles, for selling cigarettes. Individual with, cigarettes. Individual yes. cigarettes, yeah. Yeah, he had also had uh, some minor marijuana charges yeah. in the past. By, by singles, he doesn't mean his mixtape. Yeah. So, or single ladies. <laughs> he's standing there on the, the single ladies. He's standing there on the corner. Cops approach That's him. About. They <laughs> haven't seen him do anything criminal at the time. They just know the guy. Yeah. He's just got a reputation. Yeah. They approach him. They start talking to him. There's actually recording of this. Uh, and he basically tells him, look, guys, I haven't been doing anything illegal. Y'all need to leave me alone. And he said, and they, they start approaching him, say, no, no, no. And he's like, look, I'm not talking to you guys anymore. I haven't done anything wrong, and you don't have any reason to bother me. Leave me alone. They come behind him. They go to grab him and handcuff him. He pulls his hands out in front. They throw their arm around his neck, which NYPD, uh, sorry, in New York, it is illegal to use a chokehold. They say later it's not a chokehold. I've heard MMA fighters analyze the yeah. video and saying, in the ring, I'd call that a chokehold because like they choke. Chokehold choked, to me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but he, they put their arm around him. They take him down. He starts saying, he says 13 times, I can't breathe. They take him to the ground, um, have their arm around his neck the whole time. He finally passes out. They get up. They leave him there. He sits there for minutes. Paramedics arrive. Nobody performs CPR on him. They later find him dead, and everybody says, well, I thought he was fine. Uh, they, they do roll him on his back to maybe help him breathe some, but at this point, it's well too late. Um, an autopsy is performed that is ruled a homicide. Um, I've heard some sources say that he never ha even had cigarettes on him, though I couldn't substantiate that. So I, I don't know. Although I could neither substantiate that they found any evidence that he was selling singles. So that's kind of, you know, you know, take what you will from that. Uh, autopsy rules it a homicide. They didn't find any damage to his trachea, but they do think he, he died from positional asphyxiation. Um, so guy here. No evidence that I can find anywhere of a crime being committed that the cops have. Uh, there is a prior history here. They harass him. They take him to the ground. They choke him to death. They don't listen to his own pleas that he can't breathe. Um, uh, he ends up dying. Uh, beyond that, there's some really sick individuals. Uh, I don't really like to take harsh sides on either one of these, but I will say fuck you to all the NYPD officers who showed up at the counter rally with I can breathe shirts on. Uh, you're sick. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, so, so this is a little bit different story. It's not as clear cut. I mean, we don't actually know. And a lot of the proceedings were kept secret whether or not he was selling singles, but I think we can all say that's a fairly minor crime to get let choked me, to death for. Let, 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 let me just, just just say one thing, you know, here because uh, I remember in the in the military uh, when we were part of what we were taught to do was uh, like security, peacekeeping kind of mm -hmm. things, and uh, one of the things they taught us about you know, the I can't breathe, and I'm sure they tell cops that too. If you can say I can't breathe, you can breathe. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, you, you know, so, so you know. Let, let's at least throw that out there as well. <laughs> While I am by no means on the side of the of, of the police officer here, the fact is, if you can say it, you're breathing. But that's, and, and that's what I've fine. been told in Heimlich training. Yeah, is you know, if they can say that they're choking, they're, they're, they're you fine. don't need to do. Well, yeah. what they say is you don't need to do the Heimlich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But but here's the, the 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 more telling thing to me, honestly. Uh, he obviously was having trouble breathing. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we can say that, and. Once he stopped saying it and passed out, he definitely. They didn't render medical assistance at That's that point. That's a problem. Yeah. You That's know. a problem. Yeah. Uh, well, and and I have in the interest of fairness, I think we need to point out all the facts. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Having been subjected to a chokehold, a few different types of chokeholds in the past, I can tell you, I have been able, I have had my airway restricted, still been able to talk but definitely not been getting the oxygen that I was getting yeah, without sure, that. Sure, sure, yeah. sure, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and 
the other side of that is I think of my, my, my little sister, uh, that, that y'all know, mm-hmm. uh, who, when she was a kid, every time that, that she and I would get in a fight or an argument, she would scream, I can't breathe. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've, I've got her toe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I can remember this as a kid. Then I get my ass beat because I, I was picking on my sister. So, well, you were yeah, picking no, on your sister. I was. I was. <laughs> yeah. I, I deserved it. Don't get me wrong. Well, and to be fair, there was a, a, a black female, uh, officer who was, uh, of some rank and overseeing this whole thing and she didn't think there was a problem she was watching the whole thing and she didn't step in so i mean yeah. um and, and that'll become relevant here in a little bit i, d- I do want to talk for a second about philando castile yeah. i didn't yeah. see any evidence of racism in that case i saw evidence of assholeism yeah yeah so philando castile gets pulled over um and he's upstanding citizen as far yeah. as any record can tell this is the worst one of the bunch to me yeah he hasn't done anything wrong the police the police officer walks up to his window and he correctly reports to him that he has a um license to carry license yeah. to carry um he is told to get his license he reaches in his back pocket the the officer who is clearly already shaking at this point which it's not clear get why the fuck off the force yeah it's not clear why he's upset. Some have reported that, you know, he maybe thought he was a suspect for another robbery. I mean, to me, that's 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 Officers kind of a weak. Officers are supposed to have an impeccable ability to maintain their cool in a tense situation. If you can't do that, get the fuck off the force. Yeah, because it can't be on the citizens. I'm sorry, you were trained. They weren't. Um, he reaches for his license. He says, "Stop! Don't don't grab your 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 gun." And in a matter of moments, before, first of all, anything could have come out to be seen that he was grabbing his license. And, and second of all, before somebody could have reasonably reacted to the command, he pulls out his gun and starts putting bullets through him. His Unloads daughter. it, doesn't he? Yeah. His daughter's in the back seat, by the way, behind him. Yeah. <laughs> just, just want to point that out. Um, and it unloads his gun on him. They find his hand. He's grabbing his license to carry to give it to the officer. Um, he has no previous criminal history um th- there's really no reason this man should have died yeah. Yeah. so all three of these cases the reason i want to bring up these three vastly different cases on a spectrum is in every single one of these cases the loudest voices from the left have yelled racism mm-hmm. and the loudest voices from the right have yelled thug yeah. In fact, to the point that Philando Castile, I've seen some fake news videos going around of where he was supposedly robbing a store moments before he got shot. Yeah. yeah. Which is not it's not true. It's it's not true yeah. at all. Um, it or is the ones where they take some a, a picture of that some guy had posted on social media of him like holding guns and having tons of weed on the table and like tons of money that are so far like don't even begin to look like him. Yeah. Yeah. And so what you have here is is a very racist group on the right. And, and, and I, I'm not saying that everyone on the right is racist, but I'm saying these people are clearly racist. Uh, uh, pushing a message, uh, a, a very liberal group on the left saying all of this is racism, which isn't necessarily the case. But the right is fueling their message and they are fueling the right. And you have these three cases which should have been treated vastly different in their own rights. And they're all cherry picking the data. They're yeah. all cherry picking the data to make them the same. And I think the danger of that and what we're seeing the president do right now is when you can take these vastly different situations and then lump them all in and say, well, this was fake news. So this was who was reported by the same parent company is fake news, too. So anything I don't like, I get to throw in this bin if I can somehow connect. If to I can this find thing. one thing in there that legitimately I shouldn't have to like. Yeah. And then the news they like, they get to say. Well, we're not going to question that. That's clearly true. I like it, right? Mm-hmm. And we see both sides doing this to the point yeah. of it becomes uh, uh, invent your own story. And that's yeah. just the facts now. Invent you know, your own story. It, and, and, and it absolutely is. I, I've mentioned on the show the last few weeks that, that I've been – I have completely gotten off Facebook. I, yeah. I, I don't mess with it at all. And the biggest – you know, I got tired of, tired of learning so many things I didn't want to. But yeah. one of the things is – I was unconsciously creating an echo chamber yeah. mm-hmm. where I was just getting stuff that was reinforced. And, and I don't want that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and that's, that's putting fake news on yourself. Yeah. You are, you know, and, and it's not, it's not even conscious. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and cause that's the thing is if we want to shut down this 
fake news environment. Because what they're doing on both both sides now, I, I personally think that there's there's more than two sides right. to I, I, everything. I, I, but I think there are two sides that are most prominent in any one given issue. There's the for and the against. And that's simple enough. Um, but those two sides are fighting so hard. And I think this is actually exacerbated by commercialized news, um, for the views, the comments, the like, they don't even give a shit if their comments are, are in favor. Yeah. They just want more comments. They want more interaction. But, um, you know, I think that's exactly what we have to do if we want to. But, demonstrate with clarity that we don't yeah. want fake news but, is but, we have to shut ourselves out from it. But you can't. Uh, yeah. You can't. And the reason why you can't is because there's these algorithms out there that are that, that are picking what you get to see. And there's there's I think about Facebook again. I think about the the uh, you know the accusations at least. I don't want to say that they've been proven, although they right. seem to have they seem to be true to me. The accusations that, that, that organizations like Facebook are, are cherry picking what news they, mm -hmm. they push forward. You know, that they're actually pushing an, an agenda forward to an extent. Yeah. Well, and, uh, and I, and, and I don't, I don't think it's, I, I, I threw the name Facebook out and, 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 and I'm, I use it as an example. Yeah. I think, I think, I think YouTube probably does it. I think, I, th I think. I know your news channels frequently do it. Yeah. This is something that's happening. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and, and I think there's another problem because people tend to not be the same people online yeah. that they yeah. are in person. I know some people that I can get along with in person that yeah. I can't get along with online at all. Um, and, you know, one... That I blocked online, but I'll talk to you in person. Yeah. And, and so, you know... I'm pissed about that, by the way. <laughs> one thing that I have a problem with... the episode. <laughs> you know, I don't want to create an e echo chamber, but there are certain things I will not put up with. Me too. I will Me not too. associate with. So, for instance, uh, I've blocked maybe 20 people in my life on Facebook. Yeah. And... I think it's like five. Well, uh, Unless you went on a blocking spree lately, I think I'm about because you showed me you had yeah. three when I had like twenty. Anyway, it didn't matter. I'm at like point. five. I, I'm yeah. Not, yeah. If yeah. you're a Holocaust denier, you get blocked. Well, a I lot have of this, mine are bots. I had this one guy. Okay, and and if you want to be on this list, uh, uh, start using the N word or anything. Yeah. But he said he said faggots. Yeah. Some of my best friends, as an insult, yes, as an insult, have been oppressed with that word, and I'm not going to put up with it. He got blocked, and I actually went out and to my 135 friends in common and said, "Here's this guy. I have disassociated associated myself. I would appreciate it if you would join me because I don't put up with that." Yeah. And so there's certain things I won't put up with. Now, for all I know, if you meet him in person, he wouldn't do that, but he feels really safe behind a computer saying that stuff. Um, and so, but on the other hand, I'm sure this guy is at least marginally intelligent with a viewpoint that is vastly different than my own and when i do that i've blocked his viewpoint but there's i'm sorry there's some stuff i'm not going to put up with you know um and so where do you find that balance of like not putting yourself around toxicity and not creating a, an echo chamber yeah i i don't know i i have a, i really struggle with the the echo chamber idea you yeah. know I, like i said i think i have five or six people i've, I've blocked because yeah. i consciously want to see that kind of stuff because i want to know what people are saying yeah yeah, yeah. but but you know there, there are things out there again if you're a holocaust denier you're fucking gone yeah yeah well and that's why um you know when we were talking to that friend of ours um why one of the things that i i kind of talked about was like you can go to this place and this place this one's right leaning this one's left leaning um but if you if you make sure and you go to both of them you can find some sort of measured middle um but I don't know. I, I keep looking at it and, you know, you say that you can't disassociate from it, but I think that you can. Um, and, and I say that from a position where I think I've fairly well done it. Now I will admit that means that I am not in the know about every last little thing that goes on, See, but I also don't need to be. Yeah. But there's, you know, I want to know, if people are, are 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 saying terrible things, I want to know that kind of stuff uh -huh. because you know if 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 they can create their own little little little, little spot, they get the incel 
uh, podcast uh-huh. we did, you know, they've got their own little community there where they're they're doing this stuff, and and that's a, that's some mm-hmm. scary stuff. Yeah, I want to know the what's vast going majority on. of what's going on there, though. Do you really need to know about? No, I I, I don't, and I don't go to it. But but you know, I right. look at it and I go, I I, I but, but I'm not going to block it. Yeah. Well, there's something. Well, and I'm not saying block it. I'm saying, um. I'm saying that. Believe me, I go out of my way not to go to some of these sites. But, right, right. But you know, I, I don't, I don't want to. I but really if you don't want editorialized news. If you think that news should not be editorialized, um, don't go to places that editorialize news. Go to well, the most neutral um, places that you can find. That could be the answer, or the answer could be. Go to all the extremes and 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 make a judgment. You know, yeah. Uh, I don't know what the right way to do is. Yeah. But do you want Do you want vanilla, or do you want all the flavors and make your own mind up? I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, and I think one of the I I think part of the issue with trying to go to all of the flavors is um, that there are so many. Yeah. Then I think that it can be much easier to find yourself a significant bias when you're trying to encompass everything um, than otherwise, especially given the amount of time that you have in a day. Yeah. I also think that, 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 that it's, it is very easy to unconsciously create an echo chamber because I've done it. I've done it on Facebook where I've looked at it. How many people have you seen that, that were just completely fucking shocked by the, by the election? And the reason they were shocked was because they're fa- on my Facebook. Hillary Clinton was well, and, and I wanted yeah. to jump in so popular on, on that, that was funny on that on the because recent thing we we saw this this group that was just like flabbergasted to the point of of alleging cheating by the election because all of their friends were on this other side, and I think it's that's, like, yeah, those are that's friends, definitely which, a yeah. symptom of the social media bubble phenomenon. Mm-hmm. So is that going to be the presidential norm going forward? Is yes. the for future elections everybody thinks their candidate's the winner because they built this bubble of their own? I, I yeah. think so. I think I, I think that in any close election. We were election, creating like, those bubbles before. But I even saw from Bernie Sanders supporters. They were like, what do you mean? You must have cheated, you know? Yeah. They're, they're idiots. <laughs> but, uh, but we had those bubbles before. They were just not ones that we created ourselves. But because but, Everybody in your local community supported one side or the other. Yeah, we see that in our own community. people could call it better. People sure. could call it better in the past of what was going to happen. Not every election. There were some surprises. I think Reagan yeah, yeah. was a huge surprise. No, Reagan wasn't a surprise. But His first term? Mm-hmm. No, no. Now he was surprised it was that big of a victory, but yeah. nobody thought nobody thought Carter was going to win in, in 80. Uh, maybe in 78 when they first started talking about it they thought about it by 80 they knew okay yeah. uh, but there there have been some surprise carter was a surprise yeah. uh you know he 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 defeated an incumbent but, but that's well, I mean, unusual what is um i wish i could remember exactly what the quote is i want to say it's by mark twain if that's if in doubt always go with mark twain or ben franklin fine uh, it was actually the other one i was leaning toward <laughs> but i'm pretty sure it's mark twain uh, correct me or confirm down below. Um, I'll probably look this up. After John's got his phone out. He's going to look. That's fine. <laughs> um, and I'm going to butcher the quote, but the gist of it is um, the cure for bigotry is travel. And that's because. That sounds like Mark Twain. It does, doesn't it? Um, but that's because what we do have, what we've had even before social media was a a secure little bubble of people who shared our same location and therefore shared similar upbringings and therefore shared similar backgrounds. And so we had, we were surrounded by people who believed the same thing that we did. Echo chambers are not new. This is not something new. Mark Twain. I knew it was Mark Twain. Travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow mindedness. And many of our people need it sorely (laughs) on, on these accounts. You got the Cliff's Nose version. (laughs) Yes. Broad, wholesome, charitable views of men and things cannot be acquired by vegetating in one little corner of the earth all one's lifetime. Okay, I got to say this. I think you're a better writer than Mark Twain because yours was better. <laughs> better. Better than Mark Twain. That's what I've always it wanted. Should be a T-shirt, Anna. Better than Mark Twain. Yeah, I like uh, it. <laughs> if we made all the T-shirts I threw this out for. We how many T-shirts? I got to go have? listen to the shows and find yeah, the yeah, T-shirts I'm and make them. Um, uh, but anyway, um, all of that to jump back to the point that we've 
always lived in, in, in an echo chamber. Sure, absolutely. This is just a different echo chamber. This different, is one of our own making, even. But, Although but with travel, you can unmake your natural I think one. it's broader. I think travel's harder, harder to unmake it now. I do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that you because, can experience because, other cultures. Um, except I don't think we can as much anymore because, now this is a different topic, but we're just one fucking McDonald's and Applebee's after another no matter where you go. It, 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 there, there, there's not a difference like there used to be. I don't know. I I've mean, been around the world. It's the same fucking thing in most places. Well, get the fuck out for a when, minute. When, I when can, we were in Italy, when I, I go, didn't see a fucking McDonald's. I didn't. I talk. did. Whenever when I can go I to Barcelona, I didn't see a single McDonald's. Not even in Venice. There's a big. There's a. You can get a Big Mac in Venice. You can get a Big Mac it. in Venice in '93. I didn't see it. I don't know. I guess I was in the right part of Venice. <laughs> but for real, like, I didn't I see a single... I was actually in the canals in Venice. That's there gross, could have... It? That's disgusting. It wasn't um, on purpose. I was very drunk. I understand. Um, but for real, like, I didn't see... If there were chain restaurants, they were not American chain restaurants... Well, they were there, but they're 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 not in they're not in buildings like we familiar. They're, they're just in in the old buildings. So yeah, you've got and, a, and that's fine. So you can walk past them without seeing them. But the, I'm saying that like, yeah. I don't think it's quite as bad as everything you're saying. Like you yeah, can get well, out of in, in, in Venice. You can't in Venice. Yeah. You can't. In, you can't in Rome. You can't in Barcelona. You fine. can't in London. Yeah, fine. I didn't we, go to any of those places. We we, we 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 are one fucking McDonald's and Applebee's after another. Different topic though. Fine. All right. Uh, are we about done? I think I, so. I, I think we have I think Mike and death. I can go on for a while on yeah, this. We but can be- change topics three more times if you want us to. Before we go, I do want to recommend a uh, show this time. Uh, we've kind of decided, and I'll let you know, we haven't done it a few times. We were kind of forcing it there on a few shows. Like, we didn't have anything to recommend. Not so that we're, they, yeah. we're, we're finding something. Um, so we kind of decided if we have something to recommend, we'll do it. If not, we won't. Uh, but this like one I do. Like find something cool when yeah. we're doing our research or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And this was a cool one I found <laughs> doing my research. Uh, they make little shorts on, on, they're kind of like our short sh- shorts. No, they, they show the bottom of your butt. Short I don't shorts. know. Oh Sorry. my God. You're my hero now. <laughs> so anyway, they do little shorts very much like our show on, on, on single topics, but they're much more produced and much shorter. Uh, it's called Then and Now. So it's they do us, but better? <laughs> us, but better. Thank you. If you like us, you'll like them better. Oh, uh, don't go. But uh, but it's called Then and Now, and I'll put a link at the end of the YouTube video, or you can find yeah. it by going on YouTube. Cool, cool. All the things. All this right. This has been a lot of fun. It has been a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you want to support the show, you can do so at Six Pack. Nope. At patreon.com slash Please support six, the show. Six Pack Philosophy. You can also find um, this show and a lot more at our website, sixpackphilosophy.com. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've enjoyed it. And we hope hey, you have too. Don't forget to buy up. some shit from some our swag. Teespring. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.